Hello guys, Windows Tech Channel here. Now this video I'm actually really excited to make. This is like something I've been dying to make for quite a while. So, in the last video, I unboxed Windows NT 4.0 and installed it. Now this one I have been really wanting to do for a while. Tried to do it in, um, tried to do it a couple of videos ago, but we had to do a clean install because, um, you know, WinWorld did not carry the 1.44 MB floppy disks versions of what you're about to see here. But now, I can finally make it happen. Because we have, in the studio now, an upgrade copy of Windows 95 on nothing but floppy disks. So, and yes, this box did sustain a little bit of water damage, but it is more or less still factory sealed. And it also has the Internet Explorer starter kit included for free. So that's going to be pretty cool to, to see here. So yeah, the box is basically pretty much more or less um, not interesting in a way. It's just exactly what you would see here. And actually, this is not my first box software I got. I also got, um, I also got the box version of... Um, Microsoft Plus Digital Media Edition for Windows XP, but the box has actually been destroyed. Certificate of Authenticity. And there's a back, which I know the back is not in the best of condition. So there's the system requirements if you want to see it. And then there's the starter kit. And then the bottom is basically nothing too special. Now, it's time to one thing I have been eagerly awaiting to do. Take this out of the seal. No going back now. And by the way, this was not cheap. I paid around like 50 some dollars just for this box copy of Windows. Which I guess is not the worst thing in the world, but yeah and windows nt i paid around like maybe 15 dollars total for all right so now we just take the top off here and we remove the cardboard insert and this is where everything is contained so let's open this up and what do we get Oh yes, our four stacks of floppy disks. Let's open them one by one and see uh, which set is which. All right, so, all right, this is disks one to five here. Um, okay, oh yes, the, uh, this is the DMF version, by the way, for the floppy disks, so kind of makes sense as to why I was unable to do this with, um, the, I was unable to do this with, um, blank diskettes. Um, oh, these are the, um, I assume the last three disks, 13, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, but there's like four sets of diskettes in here. So, oh, you know what? I bet one of them is, um, yeah, because I can already see Microsoft Internet Explorer here. And that comes on four diskettes. So there are 13 total up, uh, upgrade floppy disks for Windows 95. If I can even find the uh, other thing here, okay. So, as I expected, there are 13 upgrade floppy disks compiled here, and I still have um, the 21 floppy disk version, which I believe that was for PCs without Windows. And then we don't get that much else in here. You just get the uh, uh, want the address of the most important person at Microsoft. And it's you. <laughs> and 
And then there's all this stuff here. Now, I'm guessing, I'm guessing all of this is, um, way past expired now. However, um, I can look at the sweepstakes here. Yeah, July 15th, 1997 for that. We have the Beginner's Guide to Internet Explorer. And then we have the Introducing Windows 95 book here. This is kind of in place of a getting started guide. I'm guessing. <laughs> Pretty cool. So, with all that out of the way, we got some floppies to use. All right, so here we are on the on the Packard Bell once again. Now this thing is more or less still running Windows NT 4.0 from the last video where we unboxed Windows NT and uh, got that installed alongside the Service Pack 6A update. Uh, now in the last video, I said I was going to install Windows NT Workstation 4.0 starts here, but uh, towards the end of that video, I made the decision to go against that decision. Now, since this is an upgrade copy of Windows 95, some of you guys are gonna be um, asking, well, how are we going to get this done easily since you can't upgrade from MS-DOS to 95 since it will see MS DOS as a version of as a version. No, no, no. It'll see DOS as like a non-existent version of Windows. Well, good point. Because we're going to go that route. Going to install MS DOS first. Yes, yes, with the CD DVD driver because I promised you guys I was going to be using a CD in some form. I burned when I burned my custom Windows 3.1 one installation, which all I did for that was extract my six diskettes into a folder, and then create an ISO using IMG burn, and then just burn the burn the contents of that to a CD via the disk image burner. So that being said, let's get this going. And there should be nothing in the DVD drive right now. All right, so uh, we do actually need to boot into F disk first. Because this thing currently has an NTFS partition. Now you could install um, Windows NT with a FAT partition, but it's just not recommended. All right, setup is checking your system configuration, all right? So now we just gotta hit F3 to exit. All right, so we gotta delete a partition. Oh, it's HPFS. Do we, re oh, okay, I hit the wrong key, okay. Four. Yes, there we go. I assume HPFS is something that, um, I assume HPFS is like Windows NT's way of um, displaying, uh, as displaying a drive as an NTFS drive. It does, now later versions of Windows like 2000 XP and Vista and above, will detect the drive at, no, will detect the partition as an NTFS partition. Now, one of my last videos where I did this experiment with just installing Windows 3.1 from floppy disks and virtual PC, it's literally about the same thing. So, I I am not going to make you guys sit through the install of MS-DOS this time. All 
All right. Should be booting back up from the DOS floppy. I'm also hoping these floppy disks are in good shape. I'm a little bit worried about it though, and I did actually find a Windows um, 98 floppy disk set on eBay. Like, the entire operating system contained like 38 floppy disks. Which, again, that's something I could do, but... Eh. I mean, the I mean, to be fair though, the Windows 95 floppy disk installation from the 21 disks wasn't really that long, so yeah. And I'm just surprised how um, how quick the formatting goes on this thing. Uh, and yes, I'm also going to install um, Internet Explorer for Windows 95, even though I don't think. I don't think we're going to be able to do much with it. Um, oh, and I... <laughs> apparently I forgot about my PS2 mouse. Since if you guys saw in the last video, um, the la in the last video I did with Windows 95, uh, we weren't able to get my USB mouse working. At all. So, that's great. The funny thing is, though, Windows NT 4.0 could detect it just fine. Which, again, I'm guessing that's because Windows NT Workstation 4.0 is based off of the OSR 2 release of Windows 95, or just any version of Windows 95 that act actually started supporting USB drives. But anyways, I assume this will take about like five-ish minutes, or maybe longer, so I'll see y'all with DOS set up. All right. Move all disks. So that's MS DOS installed. Gotta restart for the changes to take effect. And now we get the CDBBD driver. Because, yes, this, this computer has a DVD drive in it from like 2005. <laughs> I keep mentioning that. Gotta wait for thing to actually boot up here. Alright, so MS-DOS version 6.22. So, let me show you guys just how stupid easy it is for this driver to install. Yeah, that is really stupid easy. <laughs> Yeah, so we have the, yeah, there's a setup exe file as well, but eh, why would you care? So now we just got to remove the disk and hit control delete. Because yes, a system reboot is needed for, for, the chances, for the changes to take effect on the CD drive, no, the CD DVD driver thing as well. And that is it for the MS-DOS floppy disks. All right, so now it's time for the most interesting part of them all. Windows 3.1 on the CD. This is the only usage of the CD in this video, which I know you guys are not gonna agree with me on that, but hey, I just wanna try it out for y'all. So we gotta swap over to the D drive and if we run a directory listing, Yep, everything is there, as you guys just saw. So now we just gotta run setup. All right, so we're just gonna press enter here, express setup, and there we go, setup is copying files. And it, <laughs> that's the greatest thing about this, is that this will save me a bunch of time because no longer will it ask you for those floppy disks. And yes, I do have this version of um, Windows 3.1 on the archive. And this was a massive missed opportunity from Microsoft themselves. They were fully capable of, yeah, they were fully capable of releasing a CD version of Windows 3.1, but they just never did. 
And yes, the CD, yeah, I'm, you guys are not able to see this, but the activity light on my DVD drive is on full time. Uh, oh yeah, my USB mouse does work in this version. All right, so we have no printer on this then. And MS-DOS editor. Skip tutorial. And now we have, and now we got to remove the CD. So yeah, that took no less than like three minutes. I bet. All right, so now we got to reboot. And prep our up and prep our Windows 95 upgrade diskettes. Man, oh man, I can't wait to do this. So, now I am probably going to do the same thing when I do the Windows upgrade saga or Windows Upgrade Chain, as some people do it, but, um, yeah. So, we just type in Win to start Windows 3.1. Yeah, that went so by, no, no, that went by so quickly, um, the Windows 3.1 boot screen wasn't even that viewable. <laughs> All right, so, we're on Windows 3.1 now, as you can see, Help About Program Manager, and yes, we have the Program Manager, yes, Windows 3.11. All right, so real quick, let's uh, we're gonna change the thing here. Inactive order. Um, let's make it that shade of purple. Inactive title bar will be yellow. Active title bar. Um, how about this shade of green here? Highlighted text will be, oh, that means I can't see anything. Um, we're gonna go with that shade of blue here. Window text will be um, pink. Button face. Oh gosh, let's make it stupid. And then, Button text, we have to change that, obviously. Um, actually, let's change the button, uh, oh, button highlight, okay. Um, button face, okay, that's what I wanted to change here, okay. All right, I mean, that'll be fine. Application workspace, um, we're gonna go with that shade of golden here, it's not gonna look the greatest. Window background, blue, Disable text. Um, let's go with that. Menu bar. I'll make orange. Oh wait, no, that's not orange. All right, I'll do red. All right. Now, hit OK and there we go. Oh my God, this looks so bad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this looks so bad. But the point of this is just to see if Windows 95 will keep these custom settings. Speaking of Windows 95, let's get that installed on here really quickly. So you can do it from DOS, but we're going to be doing it from within Windows. And let me see if the box has a key of sorts. Or will it? I don't think it will. Huh. Um. Alright. So, to get this started, we got to go into File Manager. And go to the A drive. And we run... Where's Setup? Oh, there's Setup. We run Setup. Welcome to Windows 95 Setup. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this looks terrible. <laughs> Alright, congratulations on your choice of Windows 95. The newest and easiest way 
to do what you want to do with your PC. Setup will take 30 to 60 minutes, so I can expect that to be accurate. Now we gotta hit continue here. Setup is now performing a routine check on your system. We didn't see this in the last time I took a look at Windows 95. Although that probably just, although to be fair, I think it probably would have ran scan disk. Copyright 1996. So, actually, I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see that. It says copyright 96 as opposed to 95. So, this might actually be a later version of Windows 95. Or something. I know the OEM, I, I know the OEM company has got um, updated versions of Windows 95. But, um,. I don't think there's anything different about it, just a different copyright date. Yeah, it's going to do the exact same thing it asked me in the uh, in the original video, where you have to where you have to swap the disk as the setup actually loads. All right, I'm gonna hope my USB mouse works the entire time. Anyways. All right, um, in the last time that we did it, it asked for disk three midway through that, so <laughs> I'm probably gonna be comparing um, the original video I did on this to uh, this one here, so. <laughs> All right, so obviously we agree to the EULA, and here's the setup wizard. So, now we're just going to go through this here. Preparing directory. Um, save system files, we're going to do that. Um, okay, so it has not asked for a product ID, so maybe we don't need one. Custom, because we're going to get everything. Windows Tech, that sounds correct to me. Product identification, oh wait, so maybe this does actually, um... Okay, so maybe it does actually, uh, take it down by default, or whatever. Um, we're going to analyze this thing. I think this thing has a sound card. Okay. Did I move the mouse here? Because this is the part where a will freeze up sometimes. Alright. And I barely had the PC lock up during this part. Yeah, like, the thing is not frozen yet. It is still detecting the uh, hardware in this thing. It's at 96. Alright, I'll just leave the... Oh, wait, never mind. It's at 97 now. Um, still taking quite a while, so I'll just come back at the next screen. Well, that didn't take long at all. Anyway, um... You have to get connected screen. Um, we're not going to do any of this. Um, all these components install Microsoft Exchange as their universal email client. Next. And then going to uncheck and recheck everything. Because that will... Um, that will select everything. And yeah, we're just going to get everything. So, yes, it does utilize a 2 gigabyte partition. Alright, so. Following network components will be used. We're not really going to care about that. Okay, Windows, I'm the Norgit. <laughs> that 
that's kind of funny. All right, so again, this thing is an ATI VGA Wonder. So now, just because it has that doesn't really mean it's going to detect it like right out of the box. Now, I'll show you this since I wasn't able to in the first video. You can use the program manager and uh, Windows 3.1, but it's not recommended. And um, we're not going to create a startup disk for now because this is a floppy upgrade copy of Windows 95. By the way, if I'm going to be doing this, um, by the way, if I'm going to be doing this, um, Windows 1 to, Windows 1 to latest style, then I'm going to just be using the CACD version of the, uh, upgrade from 3.1 to 95. So, now, is copying all the files to the hard drive. So, at this point... Cue the time lapse. Obviously that didn't take nearly as long as the 21 floppy disk version did. Yeah, that was really smart of Microsoft to condense the installation to 13 diskettes. And we gotta press finish. Now for the love of God, please detect my USB mouse this time. I mean, we already had the plug and play shit installed. Starting Windows 95, hooray. Getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. That is pretty awesome. <laughs> and we have USB support. <laughs> I gotta see which version of Windows 95 this is once we, uh, that is not what I wanted to do. Okay. All right, that showed up properly. Um, we do not, we're not gonna bother with a password. All right, this is already off to a way better start than the RTM version. And also, it's much more easier to do this from floppy disks because if you do it from the CD, then there's a chance that sometimes the drivers won't load after the first reboot. Which is completely annoying. And I believe that's everything. Um, have you used Microsoft Exchange before? No. Um, we're just going to go with the defaults. Um, one moment. All right, so we're just going to click modem because um, there appears to be a new port or modem adapter in the computer. All right. I'm guessing this is my, uh, I'm guessing this is a network card in this PC. So, close all in programs before beginning detection. Well, you kind of can't because we're still in the middle of setup. And this indicator stopped for a long time, you'll need to restart. 
Um, I mean, we don't really have to do this. I mean, I could just do this in, within Windows. All right, but it looks like it's still going. It's just taking a while. Ah, uh, yeah, there it goes. All right. Windows had, okay, Windows has finished detecting hardware. Okay, so let's see here. Um, do you want to restart your computer now? And I believe it's now in the process of rebooting for the final time, and I'm pretty sure it did pick up the network card. Now, what about, um, sound and or the, um, video card? Starting Windows 95. All right, there's the wonderful boot screen. <laughs> I love how that displays in full color. All right, and we're back. We're back at the setup screen, and yes, obviously because I said, uh, all right, to finish setting up your new hardware, you have to restart once again. Yeah, I got to look how the Windows 95 boot screen displays in, like, full color, even if you don't have full color installed on your machine. Interesting. It uses a setup as the, uh, it uses the setup background as the wallpaper. All right, that's pretty interesting. Okay. So, we're at the desktop now. I am very much pleased to say that this thing actually does have USB support. <laughs> Device manager. Okay. Um... Dial-up adapter. I found a dial-up adapter. Oh. Properties. Okay. Device is working properly. Okay. So, do we have sound, though? There's ATI um, VGA Wonder. Super VGA driver. Okay. So, can we... True color. Um, I think this is like twelve eighty. Restart should come up with Windows is now restarting. Okay, one of the best screens ever, in my opinion. <laughs> Do we really have to install the driver? Oh, man, come on! Okay, let's see if we can at least do 800 by 600. And do apologize about the floor um, making sound there. <sighs> I might have to install some form of drivers. Yeah, I might have to install some drivers on this then, which I can't do from the Packard Bell recovery disk. It's not going to do much. Oh, are you kidding me? I can't do 256 colors. Can we at least... Yeah, we're going to have to do 16 color mode. Great. Alright. When we don't have sound, that is one thing that bugs me even the slightest. All right, let's change the wallpaper. It 
it's good that we at least have some form of color on here. And yes, we do have the custom uh, color settings applied here. 256 color. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do much about it. Um, yeah, it's a little annoying, but hey, whatever. Anyways. Yeah, it's just a simple install of Windows 95. I mean, what else is there? <laughs> All right, so that, oh wait, no, we're not done yet. We gotta install Internet Explorer. See if we even can. I almost forgot about that. So let's do that really quickly here. It's only four disks. All right, go into three and a half inch floppy. And do we have a setup exe? Yes, we do. By the way, I don't know if I'm gonna be buying it yet. I'm probably gonna be buying it in the future, not right now, but um, I did run across two listings for Office 97 with the floppy disks. And speak of floppy disks, I've got a pretty interesting video for you guys coming in pretty soon. Please insert disk two. Initializing setup files, okay. Now I just need to close out the floppy disk window here. Um, okay, did I just crash windows? Okay, I might have just crashed windows. Ah, uh, yeah, because that is not doing anything, except I can still move the mouse around. Can I... Oh, never mind. Okay. And now we need disk number three. So did I... <laughs> We didn't get a CD with this, by the way. So. And it now needs disk number four is the last disk we have. This will install Microsoft Internet Explorer 3.0 build 1158. Yes. Uh, we're going to read that very carefully here. Uh, we're going to install it to program files. You need to restart. I'm going to eject the disk here and click it. And we removed the diskettes from the drive. All right, I know I'm not gonna be able to do much with it because um, this PC doesn't have any internet of sorts, but um, I mean, I could make that possible through use of a router. I would like to get this PC on the web sometime soon. I think that would be pretty cool.
start menu shortcut. Sorry, I'm guessing it was to add IE to the thing. Yeah, older versions of IE are still better in comparison to, um, freaking Edge. God, I hate Microsoft Edge. So there is the internet, but this is not Internet Explorer. No, Internet Explorer would be under, um, programs. Oh, yeah. So... We have a blank HTML file here, I thought HTM. So, I wonder if there's anything we can do in this state. Uh, oh god. I just noticed that one of these disks is a little bit cracked. However, the disk still works fine, so like, I, that's fine. Alright. So, there it is, in all of its glory. Uh, yeah, even if it tried to load Microsoft.com, it would try to load the more modern version of, micro of Microsoft website, so that would just be, um, that would just be a bit of a low blow. Let's see, can we Google? Yeah, there's nothing we can do. There's a thing, this thing is not online. Oh yeah, um, all right, all right, well, that's all I got for you guys, and, uh, I'll see y'all soon.